We know almost nothing about how the brain works. We don't understand why we think what we think or feel what we feel. We cannot fully explain any thought or decision or feeling. Brain science is in its infancy, and that's why we've been building these tools to try to help accelerate it. Ed Boyden is an American neuroscientist and professor. He developed the light switch for neurons, optogenetics, and a radical new method to stretch brain tissue to understand and treat brain disorders like never before. Today we are here with Ed Boyden, uh, who is a professor at MIT. Could you tell us in the two very simple sentences, what are you doing at MIT? Uh, well, I direct a group that works on ways to understand the brain with the hopes of repairing it. Over the last two decades, we built technology to control the brain. We can use light to activate or shut down parts of the brain and also to map the brain. We can take brain specimens and basically fill them with baby diaper material, swallowable material, mm -hmm. and make the brain grow. So by mapping the brain with this expansion method and by controlling the brain with light, uh, we are uh, not only gaining insights of the brain, but hopefully heading towards computer software simulations of the brain. Could you see an actual thought or feeling as it occurs? And uh, how close are we to uh, using it in human trials or is at this stage just in the lab? So there are several human trials, mm -hmm. uh, all focused currently on blindness. Millions of people have lost the light sensors in their eyes. They can take molecules that we found that convert light to electricity and put them into the eye, converting the rest of the eye into a camera. So many people have now received the molecule. It's not approved yet. Uh, but uh, there's been consistent gains of uh, functional vision. Not perfect, but uh, people can recognize household objects. They can see doors or you know, crosswalks and, and uh, uh, very significant restoration over their prior state. And if you take us 10 years from, for the future, where do you see this technology will turn into and how that could benefit us, why it matters? Well, if we can understand the brain, then I think there's a couple clear implications. First of all, brain diseases affect over a billion people around the world. Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, epilepsy, spinal cord injury. Uh, for many of these, there's almost no treatment and certainly no cure. Mm. So if we could pinpoint where in the brain to intervene to cure a brain disease, that would be a huge advance. Beyond that, there's a lot of excitement about AI. If you could simulate a brain that has you know, functions like the human brain, maybe you could make more human-like AI. And then finally, the human condition. We don't understand why we think what we think or feel what we feel. If we could understand what it means to be human, that could help us understand and become happier and more effective. You're probably one of the most academically very successful in a young age. And uh, how do you use your brain to make it function in a such efficient way? When you observe your own brain, is there are certain things you are doing to help you to have the best efficiency? Well, I like to focus on what I like to call learnable and teachable skills. And I think creativity and problem solving can be learned and taught. So recently, I started writing a blog where we talk about the creativity and problem solving skills we practice in my lab. And we are trying to teach them more broadly. So we've started posting them at a blog called Engineering X at Substack. And um, yeah, uh, stay tuned. We're putting up lots of articles about our problem solving methods. And when you observe so much brain activities and how different brain function, did you see a difference from a very academic brain, like for the people who are very strong in logics and compare with the people who are very strong in creativity or abstract thinking, and the kind of person changing their brain by thought or by training it in certain ways? I'm much more on the inventing side than on studying those aspects of the brain, but certainly lots of other scientists are using tools invented by others or by us and, and are asking questions about the brain. Certainly different brain functions uh, do involve different brain circuits and, and uh, yeah, things that are much more about memory or about decisions might be quite different in their brain circuitry than things that are more intuitive or subconscious. And uh, if you could explain to us how our brain function and what are the things people might not understand about our brain, what it would be? We know almost nothing about how the brain works. Okay. So yeah, I, th I think the answer what we don't know about the brain is, is almost everything. We cannot fully explain any thought or decision or feeling, and we can't cure any brain disease. So brain science is in its infancy, and that's why we've been building these tools 
to try to help accelerate it. What are the current technology available in the market to help us um, better our brain functions? Well, it's very early days. I mean, there are uh, pharmacology, like drugs that are, are used to uh, you know, treat different brain conditions, and some of them can also potentially boost certain functions. Um, but the device arena, you know, people, lots of people trying to build brain stimulation devices, those are all very early. Uh, what about, like, compare with neurostimulation with what you, you guys are inventing now? What are the differences? Well, we actually have invented many electrical neurostimulation devices as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we spun out several companies from the group that, for example, are developing non-invasive brain stimulation devices or implantable electrodes. Mm -hmm. But the optogenetic method that I described uh, is very precise because light can be aimed very precisely. And uh, if you take us a hundred years in the future, where do you see humans' technology in neuroscience will be like? Well, it's very hard to see beyond the end of a science. Mm -hmm. Like if you look at physics before quantum mechanics, nobody could imagine microchips or lasers. You know, there's even the science fiction writers could not imagine such things. Yeah. So I think it's very hard to see beyond the end of neuroscience as well. Yeah. If you really knew what your thought was, what caused your feelings, who knows, maybe we then look inside into the building blocks of our mind and we decide to become something entirely new. And my last question, what are your driving force and what keep you awake every day? Well, I guess what got me out of physics and into brain science was this deep curiosity uh, about existence. Like, it's just so weird, right? I mean, if you look at your hand, the lines in your hand or the leaves on a tree, just everything is so strange. And that led to be, I left home very young. I was only 14 years old. I really wanted to understand the nature of existence. Thank you, Ed, for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching this new episode of the Humanware Project. So that we can bring more amazing content to you, please like and subscribe. Your support means the world to us.